Hello, Matthew Carr here. I'm just going to be showing off my new ornithopter. So, first thing I do is attach the wings. The reason I start with them detached and attach them to the craft is so I can use the claws. The new asteroid grabbing claws also are the first really flexible joint that has been added to stock Herbal Space Program, and I'm abusing that horribly to make my wings flexible. And then I just get rid of the gantries that I use to put the wings on, and then it's time to go off to the races. Now, the major power for this craft, in fact the only power for this craft, comes from the landing gear that I'm using, the, uh, the landing legs. Now initially you'll see the craft doesn't start off moving very quickly, and that's because the wing movement does very little until the craft's actually moving around 8 to 10 meters a second. I don't know exactly why that is, but you'll see that the wings are bouncing a whole lot more at the beginning, and then they dampen quite a bit once the craft starts moving. I think it's some quirk of the Kerbal Aerodynamics. But once you get going, it starts with a nice gentle flap, and I speed through this because it's a long way down the runway when you're going like 15 meters per second. Once the craft gets up to around 16 meters a second, I just nose up and the craft will take off. This is because it has a very low minimum speed to get into the air. This is because the craft is essentially a glider. Now you'll see I don't flap as I take off, but I have to start flapping again once I get a little clearance from the ground. If you try to flap while taking off, it's unstable and the craft tends to push back to the ground as the wings lift. But once you're in the air, you need to start flapping because it it is essentially a glider and will fall to the ground again very quickly if the speed drops under around 12 meters a second. The actual thrust for the craft is provided by the wings, which are powered by these landing legs. The landing legs are toggled on and off using a hotkey, I use three, and you have to keep pressing it every time you want the wings to flap. Timing it is somewhat non-trivial, and so whenever I'm doing anything more complicated steering-wise, I tend to just glide. The craft is a really good glider, as you can see, so you can do all your turning and maneuvering without using the wings at all, but you'll need to resume once you get in a level flight. You'll notice I don't use any control surfaces on this craft. It's entirely turned and maneuvered with SAS units. That's because control surfaces in the default Kerbal Space Program generate thrust. And that's a problem. It creates infinigliders, which is the name given to the craft that are powered entirely by these control surfaces. The only way to avoid abusing this bug is to just not have control surfaces on your craft. Whee! And here we buzz the tower at, well, very, very slow speeds. I don't think anyone's coffee is getting knocked out of their hand today. At this point, you may be wondering how I generate forward thrust using a wing that flaps up and down. This may just be a quirk in Kerbal Space Program, but I believe it's because I'm pushing on the leading edge of the wing. This means the leading edge goes down first and goes up first, which means on both the upstroke and the downstroke I should be pushing air backwards, thus moving my craft forward. Landing can be slightly tricky, as going down means it speeds up, and as it speeds up, more and more lift is generated in front, which makes it pull up again. So I have to really kind of force it down, and that leads to a bit of an abrupt stop. Now the only thing left is to fly it out to the island runway. If you don't feel like watching that, thank you for watching what you have so far. Wow, and an even smoother landing than last time. Thanks again for watching. Matthew Carr, out.